There is a lot of mystery surrounding the continent of Antarctica. Officially the driest place on Earth, the ecosystems within the South Pole are untouched, and remain the healthiest anywhere, one of the main official reasons for the Antarctic Treaty. A cooperation of many of the world's nations to not pollute the area. The result of this treaty has been a ban of most human beings going there, unless crossing it on set cruise routes. If there are ancient ruins within this mysterious place, they will be buried under kilometers of ice, only the largest of which, would even show any evidence of their existence on the surface of the ice which encases them. These ruins may not even be classified as ruins, if they were flooded by a deluge, which in turn froze during pole shifts, they would be the most pristine ancient structures now left on earth, they may look as if they were abandoned yesterday. There are many strange reports from the region of Antarctica, usually attached to those not lucky enough to survive its elements, many researchers online claim to have found evidence of ruins and even pyramids within the South Pole. So, what I set out to do, was to attempt to find any evidence for a past colonization of Antarctica, and if I cover up of these articles has ensued, to attempt to find any artifacts that were lucky enough to attain public exposure before their disappearance from the official records. It did not take me long to realize I was already aware of such an artifact. A map made in 1513, by Turkish Admiral Pyari Rees, created in accordance with ancient knowledge contained within manuscripts, which would later be lost during the destruction of the Library of Alexandria. Whether these fires which occurred over a duration of eight years, were orchestrated to steal these ancient books, or indeed to destroy them forever is unknown. But from this lost knowledge, the continent of Antarctica would be shown without ice. It was thought at the time that the manuscripts within the library, were only a few centuries old at most, yet the evidence would suggest they were very much older than assumed. Which is a conclusion numerous researchers have made. The map has intrigued countless individuals, and like so many other things we encounter, in regards to ancient knowledge, the most important of relics become lost or destroyed. However, the map is a surviving remnant of this vast mountain of intellectual wealth, it is the smoldering amber of proof needed to confirm such knowledge has existed before, and that the shores of Antarctica were known well, in the very distant past. If the map displays the shorelines of Antarctica before it was covered with ice, and it is displayed more accurately than Brazil, then it is not a large leap of the imagination to suspect that ancient ruins, dating back to the time of this knowledge, do exist on the Antarctic continent. And while we have ancient pyramids, declared as existing on all continents of the planet, apart from Antarctica, you begin to doubt that Antarctica is an exception after all. It could be home to the largest, with the southern tip of the world encircled by the stars, it may hold the most amazing ruins on Earth. And with it being a place that only recently have we been able to explore extensively, you have to wonder what other artifacts may be preserved in the ice, what objects may have crashed in this desolate place, during the last few thousand years, just waiting to be reverse engineered. So how does such a smoking gun, such as the Pyre Rees map, survive for so long? While throughout the centuries all the source material has been engulfed with flames around it. Well, the coastline of Antarctica was not known to be displayed on the map, until we achieved the capability of developing ground-penetrating technologies. It well and truly, slipped under the radar. We recently discussed a curious find, discovered within the tundras of Antarctica. An enigmatic anomaly seemingly sliding to a halt on the ice caps of the South Pole. We notice the inaccessibility of the landmass, now permanently encased in over two miles of ice, capable of challenging the most experienced of venturer. It is a place little explored, yet regardless of this inhospitality, if it could be proven to possess any trace or series of ancient ruins, then it would prove beyond doubt that our continued posit that there exists a paradigm within historic academia, and that there is indeed a huge chapter of our history now lost, the knowledge of our origins, and these said paradigms would be proven as incorrect. For if there exists a now lost ancient civilization frozen and preserved beneath these ice caps, not only would their age be enormous, but their ruins a true testament to their capabilities. There are many ancient ruins here on our Earth, which we believe are undoubtedly older than we are now told. The Great Pyramids, the gigantic megaliths found at Baalbek in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry in China, 
all these ruins, and many more, could be far older than we are currently being taught, and their erosion-resistant characteristics will indeed ensure their existence far into the future. Many internet sleuths trawl pictures of not only Antarctica, but the reels of photos sent back by the Mars rovers, searching for ancient signs of life. And although many of the claimed ruins in Antarctica remain sketchy and little photographed, the next item of interest we find incredibly curious, and one of the driving reasons for this is due to these possible ruin similarities to one of the most impenetrable of them all, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. However, what makes this image of a possible outer wall truly special is its possible scale. If indeed factually true, and this is indeed the remnants of an ancient fortress outer barrier, it would be over 2 miles in length. With the continent of Antarctica being a frozen tundra for over 20 million years, if these claimed ruins turned out to indeed be of artificial origins, it would undoubtedly force the age of man back by many millions of years. We hope more is done to explore the true nature of this curious feature. Even if it is nothing but a landmass, it is unquestionably highly compelling. Froelich Gladstone Rainey was an American anthropologist. A master of narrative prose, he was the type of ancient specialist anyone in the field would have relished working with. Regarding the Arctic, he put it to the National History Museum as follows, quote, We have now found an Arctic metropolis, many times larger than anything previously thought possible in this part of the world, and once inhabited by a people whose material culture differed markedly from that of the Eskimos as we know them. He continues, One morning in the June of 1940, when Magnus Markey and I had returned to begin the second season of digging at Iputak, we soon became aware of the astonishing extent of these ruins. We could see long avenues of yellow squares, marking the ancient buildings, spanning east and west for well over a mile. Over the next several days, we hurriedly attempted to chart these ruins before they all became hidden once more. We eventually realized that more than 600 buildings would have once stood on this ancient site, a site well over a mile in length." End quote. Dated at many thousands of years old, you have to wonder, why is not more publicity shared regarding these mysterious people? One of the most striking facts regarding their artifacts was the high standard of craftsmanship. Sophisticated objects have been unearthed, which demonstrate a far more complex civilization than the proto-Eskimo culture academia would have you believe inhabited the area. The architectural abilities of this mysterious group also far exceeds the capabilities of other ancient cultures, even as far as Mexico. The largest ancient settlement ever found to have existed in Alaska it was even bigger than any Arctic coastal village in Alaska or Canada today. The town of Iputak would have once been home to more than 8,000 people. Just who were the Iputak people? How did they survive so successfully within an Arctic climate many thousands of years ago? Are we looking at a culture far older than we are told? Regardless, one reason to conceal such a fact would be the Bering Strait hypothesis a hypothesis conveniently crucial to evolution theory, and one which numerous people have lost their careers over. Dr. Scott Elias at the Colorado Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research, as far as orthodox scholarship is concerned, the validity of the Bering Land Bridge route is not up for debate. Regardless of such cult rhetoric, the Iputak people are certainly an interesting and controversial bunch, and worthy of future study. We will keep you posted.